I know wrestling has its ebbs and flows, and everybody sitting there and delusionally trying to convince themselves that wrestling's just at the low point of a bubble, it's about to burst, and then they'll get caught up in the waterfall, and there'll be another boom peak period. Give me a break. That ain't happening. Period. Period. And what's especially astounding to me is the fact that now even the WWE, and it's been a problem for a few years now, off and on, but it's getting more pronounced, it's getting worse, especially when these idiots went back to doing another brand split because that was a great idea. Now this company is playing even more to less than sold out arenas to the point where the past few weeks, Raw and SmackDown, not the house shows themselves alone, but the television tapings were playing to half empty or more than half empty arenas. Everybody involved with WWE should be goddamn ashamed of themselves. Everybody involved with a WWE product right now should be embarrassed. And the fact that heads haven't already started to roll is incredibly concerning to me. When do you hit the panic button? When do you start to show concern? You're a company sending out somebody as a golden child like Roman Reigns to feud against your previous golden child in John Cena to where these guys are so interesting and awesome that you have to tarp off the entire upper deck for the show that they're on. You give several million dollars a year to a part-time former UFC guy, former WWF slash E guy, and Brock Lesnar to sit there and appear in front of half-empty arenas. He's some type of special attraction and fucking massive mega draw, isn't he? Ah, pfft. This is unbelievable. Like, how much worse does it have to get for everybody in the, involved in this company to realize they don't know what the hell they're doing. Instead, what they're going to do is continue to get butt hurt when anybody calls them out or questions them on this clear and present bullshit and start blocking people in social media and start whining and crying about it. I mean, like, it, it just goes across the board. You know, Vince McMahon, this is your baby. This has been your life. More than your wife, more than your kids, more than your grandkids. You are the WWE. And as you continue to advance through your golden years and you get one, one day closer to having one foot in the grave, I can't imagine you'd be proud of this legacy at this point. I can't imagine you being proud of handing this off to your family. I can't imagine you being proud of the crap hole that you've created. Kevin Dunn, you should be ashamed of yourself. Your shaky camera angles, your switching of camera spots, all the crappy things you do from a production standpoint with your fucking Bugs Bunny teeth. You do nothing good, you absolutely suck, and the fact that you still have a job as a head of production is beyond me. All the people that want to nut hug and kiss the ass of God himself on everything, the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley, triple freaking H, because you want to kiss his ass because you think NXT is anything other than the WWE spin on a fucking independent promotion that actually fucking sucks to where we create these talents or in their characters just to bring them up to the main roster and not use them and we'll automatically blame Vince, but we don't blame Triple H. Ding dong, dumb dicks. Triple H isn't very good at his fucking job either because some of the golden boys that he's chosen have included Roman Reigns and Finn Balor. My God, I tell you, what a great ivory down with the asshole ass. Stephanie McMahon, who created an environment where instead of having wrestling people write and produce wrestling shows and book wrestling shows, now we have a creative team where we bring in TV writers and soap opera writers and comedians and non-wrestling fans and we actually encourage having non-wrestling fans because ultimately why would you need to know anything about the fucking product that you write for the creative team ultimately it all funnels up to Vince McMahon but damn it all give them some better ideas the creative team absolutely sucks too because if they presented better ideas, at some point in time, those better ideas would actually show themselves on television. USA Network, for 
telling the WWE you wanted them to go three hours and then continuing to give them more money and making them stay three hours. You can kiss my ass too. This brand split is absolutely ridiculous. This is just a way for the WWE to mask their deficiencies by basically running twice the show to try and increase their revenue so that way they could squeeze out just a little bit more profit because they're not making nearly the amount of profit that they should for the size of company that they are. The talent's to blame too. You've got a bunch of small bland spot monkeys and imagine that as the product gets smaller, the viewership gets smaller. You don't like it, that's tough shit. Because that's the way it is, that's the way it's always been. And then when you specially combine that with a bunch of big dopey charisma vacuums like Brock Lesnar and fucking Roman Reigns and fucking Baron Corbin and all these other dudes, like we made Jinder Mahal a WWE champion because he found some type of secret stuff that we haven't found an appropriate drug test for so that way he could drop hot and we could suspend him. Then this over-reliance on part-timers like a Brock Lesnar before that Goldberg and so many other guys because ultimately there's been a failure by design over the years for this company to create new stars. They would have rather sat there and continued to elevate props of the company like Cena and Orton and bury every other young guy like they could because their whole philosophy was these guys were mediocre cash cows, but they were the cash cows they had, so they were going to ride them all the way to mediocrity and decreasing profits and revenues. So we're going to undercut everybody else. The 50-50 booking that doesn't get anybody fucking over. The whole philosophy of the company, which is epitomized by that dipshit road dog, where wins and losses don't matter. So it's a wrestling business, especially when we're emphasizing athleticism and trying to make it feel like a real sport in that sense. We're going to say wins and losses don't matter. Then why do we have any of the fucking matches, you stupid fuck? We have a cruiserweight division where more of the guys wrestle like giants than they do cruiserweights. We have giants and big men wrestling like they're freaking cruiserweights. Everybody does the same damn moves. Everybody looks the same. Everybody feels the same. Pretty much everybody acts the same. We have women that, for the most part, are ugly that try to wrestle like the boys, so that way they stand out less. But we have a bunch of dudes that want to get all feminazied about this bullshit that think that's okay. Ding dong, dumb dicks. They are also... Just like Finn Balor, just like all the other small guys, the cruiserweights, just like all the big guys like Roman Reigns, Cena, Braun Strowman, and Brock Lesnar, they're performing in front of the same half-empty arenas. The same stupid company that brings back a Mickey James and does absolutely nothing with her. The same company that brings back the Dudley Boys and completely screws the pooch on that. The same company that brings back the Hardys and then finds a way to make them largely irrelevant only after a few months when they were one of the most interesting acts throughout professional wrestling when they were brought in. You've got terrible storylines. You've got characters that you don't give a crap about. Everything about this product is just so stupid. Matches that don't matter. Characters that don't matter. Stories that don't matter. Shows that ultimately do not matter because, again, you sit there and promote these pay-per-views kind of half ass build up a lukewarm level of excitement just so that way you know the next night a lot of those matches are just going to replay on television anyway so why the hell would you watch why the hell would you subscribe to the network this company should be ashamed of speaking the network the wwe network this was a, a network that was supposed to be a godsend for them it was going to change the way they did everything and it's changed it not necessarily in a good way because instead of trying to justify a 45 to 55 or 60 dollar pay-per-view price point now they only have to worry about justifying 9.99 a month and a lot of times it shows and for the fact they still only charge three and a half years later nine ninety nine a month for the WWE Network and they still can't consistently get closer to the two million subscriber threshold as they are available in so many countries around the world is just an indictment of how flawed this company's thinking is and just an indictment of just how bad of a place they are. This is embarrassing. I've never been ashamed to be a wrestling fan. I've never been ashamed to say I watch WWE. I've been proud of it. But I can tell you right now, while I'm not ashamed of being a wrestling fan, I'd be ashamed of admitting that I watch this shitty product in public. And I most certainly wouldn't guide or direct anybody to watch this because it would be an embarrassment to me. Imagine me trying to tell somebody, you should watch Raw, it's really good, and then, for whatever inexplicable 
inexplicable reason, they actually did watch Raw. They would hate me forever. And who could blame them? The bottom line is, all of these things the company has done over the years, the chickens are coming home to roost. And of course, for a company like WWE, where it feels like really the motto is world's worst excuses, there's going to be ready-made excuses. There's going to be a defense mechanism. Oh, television viewership is down. Ratings are down. Well, we're going up against Monday Night Football. Oh, my God. All this cord cutting and cable cutting, the increased competition, and it's all this other bullshit. If your product was better, if your talent was better, if your stories were better, if your characters were better, you would be better and your product would be better, and your viewership would be better, your merch sales would be better, and most especially your live attendance would be better. How much it must suck as a performer to go out there and basically play to a camera where there's no people sitting there because everybody's freaking behind you. What a joke. And imagine being part of a company where you continue to try and defend everything as being okie dokie when you're performing in front of half-empty arenas relatively consistently now. At what point in time do we stop using these world's worst excuses and do heads start to roll? Because in the business world, real businesses that run themselves like real credible businesses and publicly traded entities will get to a point in time where they start to say, we've lost enough and this shit needs to change and it needs to change now. But when you get apathetic and you get complacent like Vince has gotten in his increasing senior years, I guess it doesn't matter. Until Vince is replaced... By the board, none of it's going to change. It's only going to get worse. And it makes you wonder, really, how much longer you can continue to support this crappy product. And I know it's a question I keep asking myself. I've been asking it for years, and I just wonder...